in the gross income definition, it then tells us that we need to apply this to a resident. As we've noted, that there is a separate definition for non-residents, but we, let's talk about what it means to be a resident. So, the definition of a resident is given to us in section 1, and here, just for now, we're only talking about the natural person element about it. It's discussed separately for natural persons and things like companies. So, resident is discussed in section 1, and the definition says that you will be considered a resident of South Africa if you are ordinarily resident, that is a term that they use, or if you are physically present. And this is the physical presence test. Now, before I go into the detail around this, what is very important to understand is that you will first apply this consideration and then you will only consider the physical presence test. You must do it in that order, not the other way around, because you're at the bottom. The physical presence test does not apply if the person was ordinarily resident. And you see I put it here in inverted commas because we'll talk what that means. Ordinary resident. So you do not apply this test if the person was ordinary resident at any point during the year. So that means even if you were a resident for a day, you cannot apply this. So a person that emigrated, emigrated, e, exit, emigrate, that person who's leaving the country, would have been a resident for a day or two at least in South Africa before they left. So you can't apply the physical presence test. A person that comes into South Africa, immigrates in, I, in, that person was resident only for a part of the year, so you cannot apply the physical presence test. Okay, because they were ordinary resident for at least a day. Now, let's talk then what it means to be ordinary resident. There are two court cases the Cohen case and the Catal case that spoke about that. Basically, what it means is the term ordinary resident is not defined in the Act. So they didn't say, what does it mean to be ordinary resident? They just put it in the Act. So the two cases, the Cohen and Catal case, again, guys, the principle is important. Cohen is, they say that you are a resident at the place where a person will return to naturally and as a matter of course from his wanderings. That is a term they use, quite nice. You will sometimes hear people joking around and still. It's a place that you will return to from your wanderings. So basically the idea behind this is that if you, let's say you stay, you're staying in South Africa and you decide to go to, let's say, Europe for a couple of years and you want to go to each or a lot of countries, different countries in Europe. So, you go to Europe, you start earning income in Europe. Now you say, I'm not paying, I'm out of South Africa, I'm going to be out of South Africa for a number of years because I'm basically seeing the world. Now, it goes, SAR says they want to tax you, you obviously disagree, it goes to court. What will the court say? The court will look at your situation and say, okay, if we look at your situation, in South Africa, you have a house. You're still paying that house? Inside the house is all of your furniture? There is your mother's piano that you inherited from her. There are pictures on the wall of your grandmother. And basically, if we look at your house, we can see that at some point you're going to come, going to come back to South Africa. It's very likely. The course obviously don't know for a fact that they can see. They'll have to make an estimate or a determination. They'll see. It's very likely you're going to come back to South Africa because you still have everything in your house. So it's a place that you'll return to from your wanderings. So that's what they'll include it. Right, what is this different situation? You are from South Africa and you decide to go to Europe. So what you do is you know you're going to be away. So all of the things in your house you sell. You get rid of it. Maybe you, let's say you even keep your house. Right, as an investment. Now you go to Europe and you start, find jobs there and you find yourself a life partner, boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. And you start living there. Maybe you even get married. You start integrating yourself into a neighborhood there. You join a religious institution if you're so inclined. You join a community watch. You join a reading group. All of those things, you basically start living life in Europe. Now you earn money and someone else wants to tax you. Goes to court. 
courts look at it, they say, okay, yes, we can see you have a property in South Africa still, but as an investment, because we can see it's empty, you haven't really been there, maybe you've been there only a couple of days on a quick holiday or to have a place to stay. But we can see that you've integrated yourself much more into the European culture, you've basically joined the community there. So then they'll say, it looks like you won't be coming back to South Africa from your wanderings, so you're no longer considered a resident. The cartel case basically said the same thing. They'll look at it and call you, if you have everything that you're doing in Europe now, you've set up a life there for yourself, that is what you'll consider calling your real home. Right, so again, it doesn't mean if you have any property in South Africa that you are a resident. They have to look at the balance of facts and determine, does it seem like you're still a South African resident? Not something that is often tested. Physical presence test, guys, also not often tested, but basically the physical presence test there. We will now get situations, and I'm going to remind you again, the physical presence test does not apply if you were ordinary resident at any point during this year. So, the physical presence test is now, you were not considered ordinary resident. So, we did not believe that South Africa is the place you will turn to from your wanderings. It is not your real home. So, you are not a resident of South Africa, which means you will not be taxed on your worldwide income. But now, you come to South Africa a lot. So, I'm going to use an example here. A person, an American, who comes to South Africa very, very often to do business here. American, he's a diamond trader, let's say, comes to the African very often to trade in diamonds. All right, here we go. Now, the physical presence test says, if you meet the requirements, all of these requirements, for the physical presence test, then they will treat you as if you are a resident of South Africa, even though you're not a, or even though you're not ordinary resident. They will still treat you as if you're a resident from the 1st of March of the current year. Remember, we're looking at natural persons. The 1st of March is the beginning of the tax year. So in other words, they say, if you meet this requirements, we'll go back to the beginning of the tax year and treat it as if you were actually a resident of South Africa from that date. So what are the requirements? It says, you must be physically present in South Africa for more than 91 days in the current year. So the current tax year more than 91 days, so 92 days, 93 days, etc. You must be in South Africa. Plus, you must be physically present in South Africa for more than 91 days in each of the five preceding years. So, if this is currently, let's say, the year 2020, then 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. One, two, three, four, five years before. Right, so this is basically year number six. So in each of those five years before this, you must be more than 91 days, so 92, 93, etc. Plus then, the total of all of these days in the five preceding years, if you add up all of the days, must be more than 915 days in total. Right, so more than 915 days in total. Now that means, guys, basically, if I just to show you, if I say 915 day, uh, year, uh, days divided by 5, it gives us 183 days. So on average, that's half a year. So on average, you need to be in South Africa for 6 months in each of the last 5 years for this to meet the requirements. So guys, you have to really be in South Africa a lot. So the idea here is, if you're in South Africa that much, you're using our resources, so that's why we considered you to be a, a resident from the 1st of March. So all of those requirements must be met. The moment one of these will not be met, then a person is not considered a resident. Alright, so guys, basically all of them be discussed. Then just a quick comment here. If a person then leaves South Africa, They, and they leave South Africa for a continuous period, so it means unbroken, of at least 330 days. So you don't go back to South Africa for 330 days. Then they will say, okay, we don't consider you to be physically present in South Africa anymore. And then they will go back to the first day that you left. And they'll say, from that date, we treat you as if we were not a resident. So if you do any taxes they wanted to charge you, they'll obviously cancel it. Okay, again, guys. So something to be aware of, not often tested. 
if you are a, so what is it, how are you a resident of South Africa if you're not a national person? So how can we say this is a South African company? How do we know it is? Basically, the definition is a bit different from a natural person. You can also find in Section 1, it tells you that you will, a company will be a resident if South Africa is the place where it was incorporated, established, or formed, or the place where it is effectively managed. Now, incorporated, established, or formed means if you go to SIPC, CIPC, the commissioner, basically, and in terms of the South African Companies Act, you create a company in South Africa, it's a South African company. Or, let's say you are a company created in Mauritius, but all of your directors, the management of the company is in South Africa and the business trade based in South Africa, so it's, but it's managed here in South Africa, then it will also be considered a resident of South Africa. And guys, please note that this I'm saying, please note that this will be stated in the exam, per your ITC exam pronouncements.